So I haven't talked about mixing in a while. So what I want to do in this video is talk about one of my favorite tools for mixing a track or whatnot, especially like for production. Uh, this is a really strong tool, I feel, for that. And the link will be in the description box and it'll be an affiliate link and it'll bring you to this site right here where you can purchase it at. Uh, again, it's an affected mushroom pusher. Uh, the link itself will also give you an extra 10% off of that $29 dollar sale that, it, that they're having right now so that way you support the channel and get an extra discount thank you again guys so infected mushroom pusher which i'm gonna refer to as i am pusher as much as possible is a sonic enhancer and a soft clipper so without it let's hear the track i have a spectrum analysis here so pay attention to that a spectrum analyzer so let's play it So you see, it's a little flat in this particular region. And when I turn it on, I want you to notice some uh, some things right now. The mix in itself is juicier. And that's without me adding, in, without me adding any lows, uh, without me doing anything with the Sonic Enhancer itself. It already, already has a good juicy amount of fatness to it without any type of knobbing knob twisting other than just measuring the inputs and such which we're going to get into another thing i want you to notice is it is a soft clipper so if i had the infected mushroom pusher turned off and you pay attention to this area right here which is the master look at what the master reads out to as you can see it is clipping so when i turn it on let's do that readout again. You can see a soft clipping, but there's a noticeable difference in the dynamic range of the track, as you can see in the spectrum analysis right here. So uh, one of the other good useful things about it that I really like about it, as I venture off into this area right here where I go into the B part, uh, I'm gonna do, I have it full reset so we can just tear down this mix again. So. The another, another thing that makes this tool really good for both like beginners and for intermediates or anybody is this input area right here. So say that you don't have anything that will give you any meter reads, um, which is a, which is very painful, uh, or annoying when you're out on the road and you're mixing something and something might be too loud and you just don't know it. Well, it will do that. As you see, it's so still soft clipping, but now the readout over here is saying that it is clipping every kick. So let's look at it, and I want you to listen to the kicks. As you can see, uh, explaining that, of course, red means that it is too loud or too hot, uh, and orange is like optimal uh, if you are a uh, trying to gauge for that and green is good so it's a really simple readouts to understand but you know if you don't have like a a good audio interface that has any readouts or anything like that this will help you judge it as well as calibrate like your just in case if you have like an audio interface that might say that something is too hot but it's not or if something is too low and it's not uh, this is a very good tool for calibration of your sound card or audio interface. So let's hear that again. So how would I adjust it? Of course, it's real simple. Just turn it down until everything is to your liking. So I'm gonna settle with that for right now, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push it. I'm gonna push the signal so I can get the most out of my dynamic range here, and let's hear it now. That I pushed it up. So it's nice and loud, like how everybody does their music these days. But, you know, again, you know, different strokes for different folks. But again, we're going to bring some of the attention to this area right here. And we're going to talk about the Sonic Enhancer. Now, the Sonic Enhancer, I don't really touch it as much because if you do like over express yourself, that the mix itself will start seeming very thin it, it, it will be thin matter of fact i 
I would just use it sparingly, you know, just a little bit. Uh, its main focus is just to boost like the transients and such so that you get a little bit of an enhancement to it. But, you know, you can focus on the dynamic punch, which obviously hardens the track there to make it crispier. So these are things that, you know, if you are one of the greater things about this, if you was trying to like compare A and B, uh, you can get the most out of that from using the Sonic Enhancer. You know, if you're trying to compare like your track to another track. Um, also, you have your focus, which focuses uh, mainly on the higher mid frequencies. So let's go ahead and hear that. <laughs> So if your track lacks like high mid frequency range, you can use focus to kind of restore that. Uh, it just depends on what, what you're looking for overall in your track. And the other thing, of course, is stereo imaging uh, that really focuses on your mid to high frequency range. It does not affect your lower end range. Mo mo most of the time, you would definitely want your lower frequencies not to be in stereo but sometimes with some mixes you might want them to have a little bit more stereo imaging maybe not so much on the master but maybe on pianos and such so that means you could use this on different uh, tones like pianos and leads and such or pads <laughs> So it does have that usefulness to it there. And the last but not least, my favorite part of it is this right here, the lower end here. Let me go ahead and move that back. Uh, the lower end, of course, I definitely like to focus on just like squeeze, getting the, the most out of my 808s or such, just depending on the, the musical genre that you're producing. Uh, you might want to squeeze your, your bass or to make it sound like it's there. Um, because sometimes you might use a bass that might not have that type of presence. So you can use this on 808s itself or on the overall track. This is something that I do that a lot of people like. So putting it down to D2, you can hear that that it brought like the 808, the bass, and the lower end up. But now it's sitting more into the pocket of the mix than it is just being all over the place. Even though soft clippings are already holding it, they're doing a great job of holding it. I usually don't like turn up any of the lower frequencies or anything like that, but that's fine. You know, experiment to what you like in your mix because it might not be what I do might not be what, what you will want, but it's just showing you how strong of a tool this is, even though it's very simple. It has multiple uses. Uh, of course, body affects the mid frequencies. And again, I don't use anything body wise. <laughs> And of course, highs would affect the highs. But again, you know, these are tools that I don't use in overall, in overall master. So, you know, this is what I want uh, with my tracks in my mix is just to get a nice big track that has controlled dynamics that doesn't clip crazy like crazy and that I get some good reads so that way I have a great balance without doing too much to the mix, if that makes sense to you guys. But that's basically about it. Again, link will be in the description box. I just want to share this tool with everybody because a lot of people ask me about mixing. How do I get my, my beats to sound like this? And how do I get them to sound so clean and big? And this is the tool that I usually use on every damn track, no matter if I'm in Ableton or in FL. So again, link will be in the description box and it will look like this. And we are out of here. Trap Tendo. <laughs>